Hello friends, this video on structural organization of animals part 12 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. With this, let us talk about the dense connective tissue. The first dense connective tissue which we will talk about is ligament. What is ligament? A tissue which connects two bones. As I mentioned before also that we say that bones form the framework of the body. Now in order that bones should form the framework of the body, bones need to be connected to each other. So we have there has to be something which will connect one bone to another and that something is ligament. It connects one bone to another. It is a fibrous connective tissue. So the connective tissue has lot of fibers in it and that is why it is called fibrous connective tissue. Which type of fibers are present? Mostly collagen fibers and elastin protein. These are the type of fibers which are mostly present in ligament. They are considerably strong. Yeah, of course, it is an elastic tissue. However, some flexibility is there. Little extracellular matrix, not too much of extracellular matrix is really, really present here. So the next one is tendon. Now this tendon and ligament, both of them are dense connective tissue. Why they are dense connective tissue? Because of this extracellular matrix. They do not have too much of extracellular matrix. So not lot, lot of open space. Wherever you have more open space, you say it is loosely packed. If it has less open space, you say it is densely packed. So this is a densely packed connective tissue. That is why dense connective tissue. So tendon is nothing but a tissue which connects bones to muscles. So please do not get confused. Ligament will always connect bone to bone. So your ligament will connect bone to bone, whereas your tendon will connect bone to muscle. So please remember BLB and BTM. So bone to bone is ligament, bone to muscle is tendon. So this is again a fibrous connective tissue. They also mostly contain collagen fibers, good strength limited flexibility so if you talk about flexibility ligaments provide more flexibility when compared to tendon so here in this picture you can see this is one bone this is another bone so bone to bone they are connected by this red color strip which you see here this part so this is connecting these two bones together and this is your ligament now but if you want to connect this bone to a muscle this is your muscle so muscle to bone is connected by tendon right now you might ask why do we need to connect bone to bone or bone to muscle now bone to bone why we need to connect that is pretty simple if you want to make the framework of the entire body it is not made up of one single bone correct so bones to bones need to be connected why do you need to connect bones to muscles? Because muscles are the one which actually causes movements. The contraction and expansion of the muscle fibers causes movement. So your bones need to be in coordination with the muscles so that the movements can take place. So for that coordination, there has to be a connection between bone and muscle. Now we will talk about the loose connective tissue where it is not that densely packed there is quite a lot of empty space so in that we are going to discuss about two tissues one is aerolar tissue the other one is adipose tissue so first we will start with aerolar tissue it is a loose connective tissue that is cells are widely dispersed in extracellular matrix so there is a lot of spaces between two cells it is not that they are very compactly arranged some of the characteristics of aerolar tissue is loosely organized fibers abundant blood vessels and enough empty space and because of this enough empty space they are called loose connective tissue aerolar aero it is derived from the word air that means lot of empty space lot of air that is why it is called aerolar tissue so where do we find such tissues and what is its purpose they bind skin to muscles okay now you see bones got connected to bones bones got connected to muscles now muscles will get connected to skin so that if there is an interconnection between everything so these tissues again even though they are loose connective tissue but they are not that uh, soft as well they are strong enough to bind tissues yet they are soft enough to provide flexibility and cushioning so at the same time they are they give a cushion like feel and flexibility but they yet they are strong 
so they can bind the skin to muscles they fill the space inside organs and holds them together so wherever there are empty spaces in between organs it fills that space areolar tissue so that all the organs fit in or remain in their own space it is most widely found in vertebrates they also repair tissues they help in tissue repair as well so sometimes the appearance of the areolar tissue becomes similar to dense connective tissue sometimes not always sometimes it is seen that the empty space is not that much so it looks like a dense connective tissue but actually it isn't loose connective tissue. so where do we see them it is found in space between skin and muscles surrounds blood vessels and nerves bone marrow so these are some of the places where areolar tissue is found so the structure of areolar tissue it is loosely connected so extracellular matrix is again a fluid matrix made up of proteins what are the cells which are embedded in the matrix many types of cells are present basically some of them are macrophages fibroblasts mast cells these are some of the cells of the areolar tissue so they contain many different types of cells so here in this picture you can actually see the cells these are the cells which are present and this is the matrix so the matrix is fluid in nature widely dispersed are fibroblasts so that's what wide dispersion is expected here because they are loosely connected cells are generally connected by ground substance made of collagen and elastic fibers so here in the uh, matrix part you the it is made up of proteins but fibers are also present and those fibers are mostly collagen fibers and elastic fibers and because of their presence this type of tissue provides a lot of flexibility and now the last type of connective tissue that is adipose tissue so what is adipose tissue this is a connective tissue which mainly acts as fat storage site so it it is basically storing all fats so now you know right what happens if too much of fat storage is there too much increase in adipose tissue will what will happen it will cause obesity increase in weight because too much of fat will get accumulated where do we see them it is found in bone marrow breast tissue as well as below skin so these are some of the common areas where it is found and uh, its purpose is to provide insulation from heat and cold provide protective padding to organs and reserve lipids which can be utilized as energy later so see these are some of the very common things whenever you have too much of fat this this provides you insulation that's why you will see that a uh, some that a person who is very fat will feel less cold than a person who is very lean and thin that is because of the insulation provided by the fats within his body and moreover fatty things will provide the cushion like uh, appearance or cushion like feel to all other organs so it will be a kind of protective padding it and also fats are nothing but lipids so we can you can store them for now and then you can use them as a source of energy later when the body requires more energy so talking about the structure of adipose tissue the extracellular matrix here is not present so the extracellular matrix itself is absent what about the cells the cells forming adipose tissues well there are many types of cells which are present most abundant are adipocytes so for bone it is osteocytes for cartilage it is chondrocytes for adipose tissue it is adipocytes so here you can see these are the fat droplets and uh, this is how the tissue looks like now obesity occurs that is too much increase in weight occurs when the number of adipocytes increases than the desired number so the number of adipocytes or the adipose tissue cells should remain within the desired limit excess nutrients which are not used immediately are converted into fats and then these fats are stored in this type of tissue so i think this was all about connective tissue we almost discuss all types of connective tissue uh, as i said thank you please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos attempt free online test get free study material find tutors and mentors
Thank you once again.